is what is the legislature doing about all this? We have lined out, laid out the problems, and anyone with a goddamn brain could figure it out. Oklahoma lawmaker accused of bigotry after saying transgender people have mental illness. So, again, it's all culture war the whole way down. And, like, and you wonder why we can't hold the police accountable. It's because we have lawmakers who are this insecure about their sexuality, gender, understanding of, like, basic human biology. And then this, uh, (laughs) Walker Milligan emailed him, and he responded. And... And it's funny. I guess the subject was your fear is your own, which is a great subject. But um, here is Justin's response. How do you know my background? I have spent years working with the mentally ill and goes on to, like, basically just make an unfounded claim. Like, he just, I mean, basically he's making, like, the boys are boys, girls are girls argument, and that's the end of it, which, of course, is ridiculous. Um but it's like, you know, the guy can't be challenged. He'll even admit in in debate on these bills that there's not a single example of like, you know, because this is SB2, which is like, I think, the uh, save, uh, uh, save Women's Sports Insanity. So again, he can't find a single example of a transgender person playing a sport that it was an issue in Oklahoma. But just goes full transphobe, bigot on him, despite countless advocacy groups and people telling him he is wrong and just to, like, let it go. So, yeah. I mean, this is this is why we can't have nice things. I don't care about nice things. I just want things. Yeah. Like, this is what this man is perpetuating. And I, I watched this story on the news and at first, there, there's, like, the camera that's, like, behind the ledge that makes you go, mm, are they, like, sneaking this footage? But then the dude looks right in the camera and is like, they can call me a bigot. I don't care. They're bigotry-minded. And then he's like, boys are boys, girls are girls. That's just how it is. Actually, it's not. The entire gender and sex system has been created and crafted for the, first of all, for the put-down of women. Um, and before the enlightenment period, there was one sex, according to science, both men and women had the same genitalia. It was just one was inside and one was out. And then you have the declarations of the rights of man. And they're like, Ooh, if people are the same, then that means we have to give women the same. They're like, Nope. Turns out there's two sexes. And so like, even the binary, like measure of the sexes is a, oppressive force and it came out of this need for oppression of women and so i think the fact that they are men who are like or and there are women who are bigots too i want to be equal to all um you know there are these people out there that are like this is the way it's always been and i just want to shake them and say read a goddamn history book yeah and not one about world war ii and guns um because it's just that hasn't always been and now we're getting to a point where we're saying like hey, maybe we should stop picking on the kid who has been picked on, who has been ridiculed, who has taken a lot of courage and a lot of Who has an astronomical suicide rate. (laughs) Right. And it's like, like, you know, we just had the anniversary of the Matthew Shepard killing. um, And so these aren't problems that are new. They're not going away. And so why are we not trying to protect our children in the same way you're trying to protect a zygote inside of a woman's body that at that level is a parasite? Yeah, it's um, insane. Uh, a couple things. You know, we talk about, like, listening, not listening to black folks. And this is an a, a, an opportunity for me to listen. And the uh, suicide rate and murder rate of trans people in this country is scary. Like, uh, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I recall seeing the murder rate of black trans women. And I thought it was a typo. It's one of those things. Like it's so astronomically higher than yeah. the murder rate of black men, which is insanely high, right? It's so astronomically higher than that. that I was like, it ain't right. And then I looked and it was like, no, that's the murder rate, right? So that's the first thing. Uh, JJ represents Hugo, man. But anyway, um, bad. Uh, you know, I, I, I began with this about purpose of policing. And I, I think we should speak about like the purpose of, of youth sports and what their 
quote unquote trying to say, right? So I'm visiting Hugo this weekend, and uh, my my brother coaches a little league team, uh, part of the Red River Hoops. I'm I'm far, I'm shout out to him. I'm fortunate to be on the board uh, of Red River Hoops. Uh, boys and girls little league basketball teams, and they have a variety of other programming for them. Uh, conflict resolution, entrepreneurship, just a variety of things trying to do for, for kids in Hugo. And, you know, I was chopping on my brother a couple weeks ago, and he, he didn't talk about raising or uh, coaching the next LeBron. He didn't talk about uh, winning or losing. He's like, you know, it's just you're just trying to give these kids an opportunity and have them learn something. And that's the point of, of sports. Right. Like like we and, and not just sports band, any quiz bowl, any activity, which, by the way, we'll get to how Oklahoma really feels about these things. Money where the mouth is. These things are about these are avenues or vehicles to teach children teamwork with people who may not be like you. You're working towards this goal. The thrill of accomplishing a goal with others, the the uh, the heartbreak of losing and learning from losses with other people who may not be like you, who may not think like you, who may not look like you, who may be from the other side of town, but you are engaging in this, you're this unified body with others and you're working towards a common goal and sports and, and band and quiz bowl and all these extracurricular activities. The purpose of them is to give children these things of working with others, of respecting others, of loving others, uh, working towards a goal, because we believe that is a value to children to learn at that age. This undermines all of that, right? <laughs> like you're ostracizing uh, a, 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 an individual and you're telling children, but we're telling children that person is not like you. You should not try to be on a team with that person. That person should not be able to go on trips with you. That person should not be in a locker room with you. You should stay away from that person. That person is not unlike you. You should not work with that person. You're teaching children this, right? Yeah. Completely undermining the, the goal is not to win uh, in team sports. The majority of those people are not going to go to the NBA, M M NCAA. More, yeah. The majority of them ain't going to play college sports. The majority of them ain't going to play college band. The majority of them ain't going to do any of those things. But they are learning to work with each other for a common goal and to respect each other, working towards that goal together. And that sets them up in our mind for a skill that they need to succeed in life. And now we're undermining all of that for a cultural grievance. And as you all know from my lengthy fucking tangents about Kevin Stitt utilizing poor kids in Oklahoma to further his agenda to open up schools for his wealthy colleagues, there's nothing that pisses me the fuck off more than Republicans in this state using children to further their cultural grievances because they don't give a fuck about these kids. Right. Mm -hmm. So and I know that intimately coming from Choctaw County, coming from Hugo, one of the most underfunded school districts. And then you'll fuck about me. And I know it now because I'm intimately involved in it. So to give you an example. Right. He's saving you saving you sports. Your bigotry <laughs> is saving you sports. OK, well, Hugo had a really good boys and girls high school basketball team. And I, I donate money to them on the front end of each season to the girls program and the boys program. It ain't a lot of money. I'm not balling. I donate money to them. I'm an alumni, and I believe in those skills I said should be taught through that avenue to boys and girls and, and, and children in Hugo, Oklahoma, right? Children in Hugo, Oklahoma, I think it should be taught these, these valuable skills. So I donate to them. Both teams were really good. And uh, both teams made state. And so I picked up the uh, phone, called my old coach, Say, Coach, uh, I know y'all don't have the money to feed these kids when they go on trips. I'm going to say that to you again. As you go Oklahoma, it's a persistent poverty county, meaning over half of the people have lived below the poverty line since 1980. These kids ain't eating shit else. Uh, I said, y'all don't have the money to feed them on trips. Y'all got the money to go to state? He was like, oh, no, we ain't got that money. Uh, <laughs> and we, and we're trying to figure out if, we, if these children accomplish this goal together the state of Oklahoma is saying, fuck y'all. We ain't got the money to feed y'all. So yep. I had another fundraiser, right? <laughs> and shout out to everybody who donated the churches, the uh, the, the the teachers, the, the bank who had it, the entire community that donated money. Uh, they also paid taxes, which 
yeah. begs a lot of questions, but um, who um, ra- uh, raise money to send these kids uh, to state. Um, and you have some fucking nerve to refuse to fund and arts programs and music programs and, and though academic programs, extracurriculars in this state are laughable. They don't exist in many parts of this state. You have some fucking nerve to stand up before all of us and say this bigotry, this ostracizing of children, right? is saving something that you're not even fucking funding. Mm-hmm. You don't care about these kids. If you care about saving anything, before you can before you can be a bigot, <laughs> make sure it can exist. Like I want to be a bigot about this, so I want to make sure you can at least fucking play the sport. Then I'm be a bigot. Obviously, people like us would be like, "Nah, fam, you shouldn't be a bigot either." But on the front end of it, you're not even fucking funding it. Right. So that makes it e- like it makes it even so disingenuous because it's clear you don't give a fuck about these kids. Yet you're gonna use. This is an opportunity to further a call to grievance to undermine what the positive they can get out of it if it's fucking funded. Yeah. And that is just asinine on its face. And J.J. Humphreys can go fuck himself. Yeah. Right. And, and I think okay. these, sorry, these lessons happen earlier than high school. You know, the very common saying is like, children will listen. And even if these are not, you know, children are listening to these conversations around the news, like they are listening to what their parents have to say about it. I was a um, science teacher for a kids camp. And the very first day I was on the job, there was um, a young boy who had very long blonde hair and had pink fingernails. And when I dismissed them all to the bathroom, the little boys beat the shit out of him. These were five-year-old kids that shoved him to the ground and said, you're not a boy, get out of here. That doesn't happen around, you know, kids just watching Sesame Street and just chilling. That happens because adults are pushing their agenda. And even if they don't think this is the lesson I'm teaching my child, they are, you know? So this, it's, it's not all, it's like a put your money where your mouth is thing, but it's also a like, wake up and realize that the things you are casually saying have a major impact when it comes to like young developmental minds. 